Hello and welcome to the Baskerville Portal video tutorial. Here I'm going to explain how you can configure and connect to Baskerville Portal as well as launch a Jupyter Lab notebook, uh, module loading, self-installing software through a Condor environment so that it's accessible through your Jupyter notebook. Before we start, I will assume that you already have access to Baskerville and that you've got a username, password and two-factor authentication set up. If not, then please head to our first time access video that's linked in the description box below. Baskerville Portal provides easy to use web-based access to the Baskerville Tier 2 high performance computing cluster. If you're unfamiliar with using traditional tools such as the command line to interact with HPC and would much prefer just getting stuck into interacting with GUI apps like JupyterLab Notebooks, then Baskerville Portal is an easy entry point to get started with. Access Baskerville Portal by opening a web browser and navigating to portal.baskerville.ac.uk. Sign into your account using your username and password, or you can use single sign-on with the University of Birmingham, CI Federated Logon, the Alan Turing Institute, or ORCID. Do not use the single sign-on options if this is your first time signing into Baskerville. Instead, please refer to the first time access instructions linked in the video below in the description box or search the documentation. When prompted, please enter your one time passcode. Let's explore how you can see information about your Baskerville projects by learning a few useful shell commands. Click clusters, then Baskerville tier two HPC shell access then enter your password and OTP again to access a terminal. Use the command pwd to print your current working directory. When you open a terminal for the first time, you are usually dropped into your home folder, which in my example is located at slash bask slash homes slash w slash wong j. To view your project's information, type in my underscore Baskerville and hit enter. This will display any Baskerville projects that you are registered with, along with the associated QoS, as well as some tips on job submission. This information is also available at admin.baskerville.ac.uk under the View My Info link. Moving back to the terminal, let's try the command my underscore quota. This shows you the amount of storage you have used out of the available 20 gigabytes in your home folder. 20 gigabytes is sometimes not sufficient to store your research data. So let's navigate to a project folder and look at the storage available there. In this example, I use cd slash busk slash projects slash y slash yiwug dash baskerville to change directory to a project folder. Your project folder will look different. You can use the command my Baskerville that we saw earlier to determine your project path. Use the command df-h dot to see your free disk space in the current folder. Here in this example, we have the standard one terabyte of data available in our project folder, which is much more than the 20 gigabytes available in our home folder. So now that we know what our project folder is located on Baskerville, what we're going to do now is create a symbolic link between our home folder and our project folder so that you can access that project folder quickly through your home directory. Now, the reason why we want to do this is because when we launch GUI apps like JupyterLab Notebooks from Baskerville Portal, the root directory of the Jupyter Notebook points straight to your home directory so you can get to your project folder straight away from there. From the terminal, navigate back to your home directory with cd tilde. You can type pwd afterwards to print your current working directory to check you are definitely in your home folder. Use the command ls to list the contents of your home folder. Now to create a symbolic link between your home and project folder, type ln-s and then the path to your project folder. If you use the command ls again, you can now see the project folder appear in your home directory. Before we leave the terminal, one more useful command to know is bask status, which allows you to query the available number of GPUs in the system before we launch our JupyterLab job. 
Now let's go ahead and launch a Jupyter Lab server from Baskerville Portal. Head back to the dashboard and click Interactive Apps and then Jupyter Lab. This brings up the simple form where you can request resources for your job. At the top, you can select which kernel to load, followed by the number of hours and the number of GPUs. It's worth noting that on Baskerville, each node has four GPUs and 36 virtual CPU cores per GPU. As a general rule, please request only the minimum resources that you need for your job, as this could affect your priority in the queue when the system is busy. Select the Baskerville project and queue you would like to use, and then click the blue Launch button at the bottom to submit your Jupyter Lab job. This brings you to a new screen showing a summary of your interactive sessions. As mentioned before, the wait time depends on the resources you have requested and whether the scheduler can run your job depending on system availability. Once your session has loaded, click the blue Connect to Jupyter button and this will take you to your Jupyter Lab server hosted on Baskerville, powered with GPU compute. On the left hand side, in the file explorer, you can see that the default working directory goes from your home folder, which shows a sim link to our project folder that we created beforehand. Double clicking this changes our working directory to our project folder, where we have much more storage space to work from. In the launcher window, click on Python notebook at the top to open a new notebook. This will save to your current working directory. Remember to save and rename your notebooks if necessary. Working on a cluster like Baskerville is not like working on your desktop or your laptop. In order to access software from your JupyterLab notebook, you can load application modules or you can self-install software in a Conda environment. Do not mix Conda environments and module loading though, because this can result in version conflicts and an incompatible software stack. Both methods of accessing software have their advantages and disadvantages. Module loading is preferred where possible. These are system-wide applications that are built and optimized specifically for Baskerville, which results in better performance and compatibility. However, it's not easily customizable if the module you want does not exist. Although the Baskerville team are happy to install more module applications at your request. Conda environments are customizable, but can be very large. They're also not built and optimized specifically for Baskerville. Let's take a look at module loading applications in a JupyterLab notebook. To the left of the file explorer, click on the blue icon to open the LMOD extension. You can see at the top under the section loaded modules that the default environment is active. We'll probably want to return to this default collection later. So let's save it by clicking the plus symbol and saving the collection as default. The available modules section below lists all of the application modules available on Baskerville. You can also browse this catalogue on our apps.baskerville.ac.uk website. Let's load PyTorch in this example by searching for PyTorch in the search box. Double clicking the application name brings up a box summarising details of the module. Click the grey load button to module load PyTorch. This can take several minutes since PyTorch is a large piece of software that brings in many other different dependent software packages. Once PyTorch has loaded, you can see that the loaded module section has updated with all of its dependencies. Restart the kernel in your notebook before using your module application. If you want to load in a different application for a new environment, you can revert to the default collection by clicking the arrow next to the plus sign, which can again take several minutes to revert back. Let's see how we can use a Conda environment to access self-installed software through a JupyterLab notebook hosted on Baskerville Portal. 
To create a batch script, head back to your JupyterLab notebook and create a new file by right-clicking the File Explorer and selecting New File. Rename this file conda underscore create dot sh, then right-click and open the file. This opens a text editor in which you can write a batch script to create your conda environment. The script will consist of two parts, the header where you can specify resource requests and the body where shell commands are issued. We start with the shebang, which tells the script to run this file using the bash shell. Follow this up with the hash sbatch directives that tell Baskerville the account, queue, wall time, nodes, GPUs, and CPUs per GPU needed for this job. In the body of the script, always prepare your environment by using module purge, module load Baskerville, and then load Miniconda by adding module load Bask apps slash live, module load Miniconda 3. Set dash E is useful for telling the shell script to exit the program if it encounters an error. After that, we initialize Conda by running this eval command. If you would like an example copy of this script, please refer to the Baskerville Portal GitHub repo linked in the description box. Let's specify a couple of environment variables using export conda underscore env underscore path to specify the location, which is the project folder, followed by the name of our conda environment. We also use export conda underscore pkgs underscore dir equals slash temp to download packages to temporary storage. Use the command conda create to create the environment and conda activate to activate your environment. Then install Python with your chosen version with conda install using the equal sign to specify the version you would like. Subsequently, install any further packages as required. Refer to anaconda.org for a catalog of available packages. Save and close your shell script when you are done. Go back to the launcher and click Terminal. Use ls to check the contents of your current working directory. You can see the conda underscore create.sh file listed. We submit this job for Baskerville to run using sbatch followed by the name of our batch script. Use the sq command to check the status of your job where r stands for running. You'll see a couple files appear in your directory one is a .stats file detailing the statistics of the job and a .out file containing all of the printed outputs of your job. Once the job has finished, it will disappear from the S queue. Double check the slam.out file to check that your job behaved as expected and terminated gracefully. The name of your condo environment should appear in the file explorer if you've specified the project folder as the location of the conda env path. Shut down your JupyterLab session and relaunch a new session, making sure that you check the box Show Conda Environments to load in your new Conda kernel. This time when your server starts, your launcher should have new options with the My Conda Env kernel available for selection. You can explicitly change kernels within an existing notebook by clicking in the top right hand corner and choosing the Conda kernel from a drop down menu. Remember to restart the notebook after you do this. Finally, let's look at modifying your Conda environment within the same JupyterLab session once it has been built. Go to the launcher and open a terminal session, and then open up the Conda create shell script you created earlier, and simply copy and paste the module commands from the body of your script to set up your environment. After that, execute the eval command to initialize conda, as well as exporting the same conda env path and conda packages directory environment variables. Conda activate your environment, and then once that's done, you can use conda install to add more packages to your existing conda environments. And that's all for our basic introduction to Baskerville Portal. 
So what we covered in this video is how to log into Baskerville Portal, as well as access software through either module loading or self-installing software using Condo environments. I hope you found this video tutorial useful and see you again next time.